Let's talk about an approach to day trading that has really good intentions behind it, but is actually a dumb approach for two different reasons. And this is why day trading is so hard. You can approach things in ways that are truly backed by good intentions, but it's not the reality. And these dumb things are gonna lead to headaches and frustrations and just give you a false reality. And that's the type of things we want to avoid. So let me set up some context here and then I'll walk you through exactly why this noble pursuit, these, you know, this approach with good intentions is actually dumb. So this person says, it can make you rich if you have $1,000 and make 3% a day. After 10 months, you will be shocked. Now these are fantastic intentions. This is somebody saying, I'm not here to be greedy. I'm not here to get rich quick overnight. I'm not gonna be like some sort of social media, I need my private jet by next month. No, if you just start with $1,000, so small amount, and you go slow, just 3% a day, after 10 months, not exactly a small amount of time, you would be shocked. So they have the best attitude here in terms of, hey, slow and steady, don't be greedy. But yeah, this is actually a dumb approach. But let's take a look at the numbers, which will start to shed some insight into why it's not as smart as what it may seem. So let's map out exactly what they want. So they said $1,000, they said 3% a day, and then they said 10 months, but I'm just gonna go with nine uh, because not every day is a trading day. Um, so this will kind of compensate for that. And you can see right here, future value, $342,000 not too bad. So as of right now, things seem to be, wow, yeah, see, Clay, slow and steady. That adds up very, very nicely because $340,000 is a lot of money. I, I agree, it is a lot of money, but here's the catch about this approach to the market. So when we scroll down here, you can see that towards that latter part of the strategy, you're gonna be having right here, $178,000 down to 342,000. So from eight to nine, that's a big jump. Now, yes, that is compounding interest working, but there's some hidden dynamics there that you're gonna need to consider. Now, I started to point these things out to the person and they replied back to me, which helps further the point that I'm trying to drive home. They said, I think if you are consistent, disciplined and focused, you can make 3%. It isn't that difficult. Everything in day trading is difficult, but to be fair to this person, they're just coming at it from a, hey, I'm not asking for 30%. I'm not asking for 10%. I'm not even asking for 5%. I'm just saying 3%. So that, that's a reference point of what they mean by easy. In other words, they're not trying to be greedy. They're just saying, I'm not being greedy at all. All I'm saying is 3%. So yeah, when you're doing that, you can stay focused. You, you can remain disciplined and all that. But here's my challenge. I would submit to you for two reasons. You're not gonna be able to, you know, it, it, things are gonna start to fall apart. Because when you look at those numbers, remember, think about it, from going to uh, you know the 178,000 up to the 340,000, that means that this approach towards a tail end is gonna require you needing to put $300,000 into a trade. And if you're anything like me, that's probably how you would feel at the thought of putting $300,000 into a single trade. So that's gonna be the first big problem is that kind of money into a single trade. I can only speak for myself, but I think that would cause most people to start to really freak out. I mean, that's, regardless of the setup, it could be a perfect A plus setup, but if you have, you know, $250,000, $300,000 into the one trade, you gotta think that's gonna create some sweaty palms. That, that's gonna be a very big mental hurdle to clear. Now, to be fair, and I'll, maybe I'll, not maybe I will, I'll concede this point. Let's just assume, you know what, no, Clay, I have ice water in my veins. That would not phase me at all. I can throw $300,000 into a single trade, no problem at all. And you know what? It's not gonna affect me one bit from an emotional, emotional standpoint, okay, fine. There's still another problem with all this though. So let's go to the blackboard and I'll show you what I mean. So we have our trader and his name is gonna be Ice because yeah, he's got those ice waters in his veins. And he's got, that $300,000 that he is at, you know, within that approach where he's saying, okay, I gotta go for the, you know, the 3% on my $300,000 now. So he needs to put $300,000 into a trade. So that is his goal. Now, while I'm not gonna say that he's moving markets, I am gonna say that when you get to that amount of money, it's very, very realistic that the market's gonna start to notice. Like if you just throw out a $300,000 order, the market's gonna be like, oh wow, that, that's actually pretty big. And 
what a lot of people, and especially if you're new, you, you're not necessarily understanding is, for example, like let's just say that the one price that he's looking at right now is $100. So he wants to buy, and let's just call it a stock for $100. But he's got to ask himself a very important question. That question is, okay, well, how much for sale is actually available at that price? And let's just say that in this situation for sale, there's $100,000 for sale and you know available at that level. Well, what does that do? That Does that give him his $300,000? It doesn't, it gives him only $100,000 of that. So he clears out that seller, so that seller is now gone, and let's say now the next seller is at $102. So he has to ask himself a question again. What is that question? Hope you're saying, well, how much is available for sale at $102? And in this situation, let's just say it's $50,000 available at that level. So you notice the problem, okay, well, he wants 300,000 and so far he's been able to buy 150,000, right? $100,000 plus $50,000. So at this point, those sellers are all cleared away and now the next one is at, let's just say, 105. So he's gotta ask himself that question once again, well, how much is for sale at 105? And let's say, okay, at this point in time, there's finally you know, $200,000 for sale at that level. So he's only got $150,000 left, so he would be able to finally get his max position size, but you notice the problem there. He's essentially moving the market as he's trying to buy and fill that 300, whoops, fill that $300,000. So I wanna reiterate, I'm not saying you're gonna make a stock change from $100 to $105, but I'm just trying to take a little bit more extreme to illustrate that when you put in orders for big amounts of money, it becomes a lot more rigid, it, it's not fluid. Things are very, very fluid when you have $1,000 and you wanna buy $1,000 or something, because that, that's, that's not a lot, the market kind of, that's a drop in the bucket. But $300,000, that's a very different ball game where the market's gonna notice and you're not gonna just be able to see a price and say, all right, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that price at for $300,000. No, maybe here and there you, you, you might get it, but that's a very, very, uh, you know, not safe assumption that when you get up to that price range, whatever price you're looking at, you're gonna be able to buy for that level. So that's where you start to get a little bit of shakiness in terms of what kind of market are you trading? How liquid is that market? How much are you gonna move the market? You know, things like that, it doesn't become as black and white as what it does when it's at $1,000 or $10,000 or even, uh, you know, $100,000. Even at 100, that can start to get a little shaky. But when you get up into those higher amounts, People notice, the market notices, and it's not nearly as smooth as what it is when you're at $1,000. So if you bring in now the lack of, or, or the, um, so let's assume you don't have ice water in your veins, I mean, now you have all these emotions combined with the fact that things are not very smooth from a order entry standpoint, and you can see how this approach unravels very, very quickly. But once again, even if you are like Trader Ice and you have ice water in your veins, that does nothing to take away from the supply and demand logistics here where things get very rough in terms of trying to build your position size. And then on the flip side, what I just showed you is the exact opposite when you're trying to sell. Now I'll keep it brief here because you get the idea, but let's say when you're trying to sell, well, there's only 50,000 available at that level. Then you're trying to sell at this level and well, there, there, there's only $100,000, right? You get the idea is, Whatever price you think you're selling at, it could very well be lower than that because there's not enough people that are willing to buy the amount you're looking to sell. So that's the dynamic that you gotta remember, that in order to sell, there's gotta be a buyer. And if you're looking to sell $300,000 of something, but there's only somebody there willing to buy $50,000 of it or $100,000 of it, well, you're gonna have to keep going lower and lower in price to find those people that are willing to pay for that stock, whatever you're trading. And that's where things get really, really squirrely, even from an exit standpoint. Um, I mean, if you've ever traded a penny, so to take this really extreme, if you go and do this with a low liquid, low liquid penny stock, you would literally crash the market. You would drop the price and drop it, drop it, drop it, and it would. That's the extreme case, but it really just goes to show how it would be very rigid. Whereas if you have got a thousand dollars of a penny stock, you want to sell, okay, whatever. But three hundred thousand dollars not gonna happen without you greatly affecting the market. But even on the pricier stocks, the market starts to notice and things get a lot more rigid. So for those two reasons, 
Again, yes, you're not being greedy. Yes, you just wanna let compounding interest work in your favor. But once you get higher and higher down those requirements in terms of the amounts you need to put in to keep the compounding interest working, you're gonna to have to face these two big hurdles. And even if you have ice water in your veins, that doesn't take away from the fact that the hurdle of the market noticing and making it a lot more rigid on you is still going to be there. So for this person, I applaud you. Your mind is so in the right spot. Great intentions of not wanting to be greedy, wanting to go slow and steady. But unfortunately, this sort of approach is gonna put you in those situations that you know create those headaches um, that you know it, it just it, you're just not gonna be able to overcome them from a very you know simplistic of a supply and demand um, issue. So I hope this helps. And you know if you were approaching the market in this way, I'm not trying to hear it to rain on your parade, but I, I did want to give you a realistic um, expectation that eventually things are gonna start to crumble for these couple of reasons. But um, like I said, I hope this helps. And if I ran on your parade, I hope we can still be friends. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick before you go. I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm gonna to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.